now prove a theorem about the equality of two complex numbers. The theorem states two complex numbers A plus IB and C plus ID, where A, B, C and D are real numbers, these complex numbers are equal if and only if the A equals C and the B equals D. And that is really saying that two complex numbers are equal if and only if the real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are also equal. Now this is an if and only if statement and so therefore it really is two statements in one. Uh, the two statements are if A plus IB equals C plus ID, then A equals C and B equals D. And the second statement is, if A equals C and B equals D, then A plus IB equals C plus ID. So there's two statements in one, and that means we really have two proofs in one. So we'll prove the first part, uh, if A plus IB equals C plus ID, then A equals C, in B equals D, we'll prove that one first. Well, suppose A plus IB equals C plus ID. Then, juggling things around, we get A minus C equals ID minus IB. Taking out the uh, common factor I on the right-hand side, we'll get A minus C equals I outside of D minus B. We square both sides, we get A minus C all squared equals I squared outside of d minus b or squared and we know that the i squared is minus one so a minus c or squared is equal to minus d minus b or squared taking everything to the left hand side we get a minus c or squared plus d minus b or squared equals zero now that last statement a minus c or squared plus d minus b or squared equals zero that's a statement about real numbers and that can only be true if the A minus C is zero and the D minus B is zero, because otherwise the uh, left-hand side is positive and can't be equal to zero. So hence, A minus C is equal to zero and D minus B equals zero, and thus A equals C and B equals D, which completes the first part of the proof. For the second part of the proof, we prove if A equals C and B equals D, then A plus IB must equal C plus ID. Well, this is quite easy. We suppose A equals C and B equals D. And since B equals D, we multiply by I, we get IB equals ID. And since A equals C, we add those to both sides, we get A plus IB equals C plus ID, which is what we want. Complex numbers can be added or subtracted. The rules are the same as with, uh, with ordinary algebra, where we add and subtract the like terms. With complex numbers, we add and subtract the uh, real parts, we add and subtract the imaginary parts. So if Z1 is 3 plus 7i, and Z2 is 1 minus 2i, then if we add them together, Z1 plus Z2, we add the real parts, the 3 plus the 1, and the imaginary parts, the 7 plus the minus 2, and we get 4 plus 5i. With subtraction, uh, we put the brackets in, 3 plus 7i minus 1 minus 2i, and get rid of the brackets in the normal way, and then add or subtract the real parts, add or subtract the imaginary parts, we get 2 plus 9i. Multiplying two complex numbers together is just like multiplying two brackets together in ordinary algebra. I would uh, break up the first bracket, so we've got 3 plus 7i times 1 minus 2i, and break up the first bracket, take the 3, multiply the 1 minus 2i second bracket, then the plus 7i from the first bracket multiplied by 1 minus 2i in the second bracket. Expand out those two brackets, we get 3 minus 6i plus 7i minus 14i squared. But remember that i squared is minus 1. So everywhere we see i squared, we're going to replace it by minus 1. That will give us 3 minus 6i plus 7i plus 14, adding or subtracting the real parts, adding or subtracting the imaginary parts to give us 17 plus 1i, 17 plus i. Here's a question for you on multiplication of complex numbers. Find the product 3 minus 9i times minus 8 plus 6i. So 
get yourself some paper and a pen and stop the video and have a go at multiplying those two complex numbers together. Now the first step is to break up the first bracket so you'll have 3 outside of minus 8 plus 6i minus 9i times minus 8 plus 6i. And then you'll expand both of those brackets and you'll get minus 24 plus 18i plus 72i minus 54i squared. And now you replace the i squared with minus 1 and you'll get minus 24 plus 18i plus 72i plus 54. And lastly, you add or subtract the real parts, add or subtract the imaginary parts, and you get 30 plus 90i. So I hope that's what your answer was. Uh, mind you, in Solve and Evolve, when you're doing the uh, practice assignments or the final uh, exam uh, on this topic here, you'll use uh, the maple syntax. So you would enter this answer in maple as 30 plus 90 asterisk capital I. Remember that we said earlier that the product of a complex number and its conjugate is a real number. Well, we use that in dividing complex numbers. Let's consider z1 divided by z2, which is 3 plus 7i divided by 1 minus 2i. We multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. That is, we multiply by 1 plus 2i over 1 plus 2i. Multiply out the complex numbers on the top. We get uh, 3 outside of 1 plus 2i plus 7i outside of 1 plus 2i. And multiplying the uh, complex numbers on the bottom, that's the difference of two squares. So that's 1 squared minus 4i squared. We multiply the brackets out in the, on the top. We get 3 plus 6i plus 7i plus 14i squared. And with, that's all over 1 squared minus 4i squared. But wherever you see i squared, we're going to replace it by minus 1. So that will give us 3 plus 6i plus 7i minus 14, all over 1 plus 4. That simplifies to minus 11 plus 13i, all over 5. We can write that as minus 11 over 5 plus 13i over 5. It's time to take the pen and the paper out again. Here's a division question for you. We'll use the same numbers that we used in exercise one, but our question will be find the quotient 3 minus 9i divided by minus 8 plus 6i. Now, I'll give you a start and uh, then you can go ahead and finish it off. Uh, if you don't need any help, you can stop the video now and have a go at it yourself. That'll be really good. But when we're dividing by a complex number, we know that what you do is multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of that number you're dividing by. So we're dividing by minus 8 plus 6i, so we've got to multiply by minus 8 minus 6i over minus 8 minus 6i. Now, we multiply the uh, numerators and we get 3 outside of minus 8 minus 6i minus 9i outside of minus 8 minus 6i. And when we multiply the denominators, we get the difference of two squares. So we get minus 8 all squared, minus 6i all squared. Okay, you can stop the video there now and go ahead and work it all out. Write your final answer in its most simple form. We can write the answer as minus 39 over 50 plus 27 over 50i. Once again, in Solve and Evolve, when you're doing the practice uh, uh, assignments or the final exam, you would uh, write your answer in the maple syntax as minus 39 slash 50 plus 27 slash 50 asterisk capital I. You will be aware that we can plot the real numbers on the real number line, and as we go from left to right, the numbers get bigger. 
So plotted below are the real numbers minus 2, a half, square root of 2, 3 and pi. Now we plotted the real numbers along the one dimensional real number line. However, to plot complex numbers, we have to have a two dimensional complex plane. Now on the complex plane, we draw two axes. The horizontal axis is the real axis along which we move to the real part of the complex number. And the vertical axis is the imaginary axis along which we move to the imaginary part of the complex number. Notice that in the imaginary axis, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, they really represent one i, in other words, i, and then 2i, 3i, and 4i, etc. The complex number z equals x plus i y is plotted as the point p x comma y. In other words, the coordinates of the point are the real part and the imaginary part of the complex number. The points make up what is called the Argan diagram. So if we plot uh, 2 plus 3i, we go across 2 and up to 3 to the point P. That represents 2 plus 3i. If we want to plot minus 4 minus 2i, we'll go across to minus 4 and down to minus 2, which is point Q. It represents minus 4 minus 2i. If we plot 4 minus 3i, we'll go across to 4 and down to minus 3 to the point T. It will represent 4 minus 3i. If we want to plot the point 2i, that's really 0 plus 2i, so we'll go to the point 0, comma 2 up on the uh, imaginary axis to the point S. Um, if we want to plot the uh, real number 3, we remember that is really 3 plus 0i, so we'll go to the point R on the real axis, 3, comma 0. With complex numbers, we've gained much that we did not have with real numbers. For example, we've gained solutions to equations that did not have solutions in the real numbers. However, in mathematics, whenever you gain something, you also lose something. We know that if we have two unequal real numbers, say A and B, either A is less than B or B is less than A. We can put them in numerical order. Now, with complex numbers, this is not the case. We cannot say that one complex number is less than another complex number. We lose the ordering when we go to complex numbers. We cannot put complex numbers in numerical order. So, for example, if we have z equals 3 plus 4i and w equals 15 plus 16i, we cannot say that z is less than w. That would be a meaningless statement. So we do suffer some losses when we go to the complex numbers, but we make lots of gains, and the gains far outweigh the losses. I hope you have enjoyed the second part of our first lecture. If so, please subscribe to this video. In lecture two, I'll discuss two very important uh, properties of a complex number. These are its modulus and its argument, so make sure that you don't miss lecture two. At my website at Solve and Evolve, I have some practice assignments and when you finish the whole course, you can do a final examination to see how well you know the material in the topic.